Welcome to the Makino showroom in Auburn Hills, Michigan. My name is Brian Coward. I'm the EDM product line manager for Makino. With me today is Dave Robinson, EDM applications team leader. And today we're going to be talking about Sinker EDM programming. This is part two in our series going over Sinker EDM programming. And today what we're going to go over on the Hyper-I control is advanced project programming. Part one, we went over the most common types of programming that you would do on our Sinker EDM machines. Today we're going to go through some more advanced programming techniques. These include the use of templates. There are some pre-made templates that are available on the control. Dave's going to go through those, explain how they work, how you can utilize those to be more efficient in your programming. Also going to go over some user data information. You can create specific user data that you've custom built for your applications, save it on a control, and you can use it whenever you need it. We're also going to go over some of the positioning models that are available on the Hyper-I control. These are things like grid pattern. You can enter in a grid pattern um, positioning and it will automatically create the program for you and Dave will go over that as well. And then lastly, Dave's going to go over the compensation data, how we use compensation data, uh, when you should utilize it to be more efficient. And then at the end of Dave's presentation, we'll be available for a question and answer session. So right now, let's go out to the showroom and Dave, take it away. So welcome back. Uh, we're now out at the machine. So this is part two of our project programming. Now we're gonna go into some more of the advanced techniques in the project programming side. So part one was our basic techniques. We're gonna go into now some of the more advanced techniques. So let's go ahead and jump on the control and answer some, some questions on the advanced side. So previously we looked at our technology picks, spark area, cavity depth and roughness. So all, all of the techniques that we used in part one, all of the basic techniques are orbit set. Any of these processes that we create can be templated. So with our template system, this is what's going to speed up our programming and be able to select these these same four positions that we did, our technology pick, orbit set, and optional set data faster by creating a template. So I've created my, my setup from our basic. Now I'm going to go ahead and template any of those picks in, a, in template maintenance. So I'm going to select template maintenance. I'm going to save template as. So I'm going to pick a number that's open. So number seven is now open. And I'm going to go ahead and give the template a name and save that under a name. So previously we picked solid. We did a spherical orbit. 10 thou reduction to a five R max finish. So I'm gonna label that just so we know when we go back, if I need to reuse these settings, I can reuse that template and speed up the process of the project programming. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it. You can see here now on number seven, we have solid for technology, spherical, 10 thou reduction and five R max finish. So when I go in and, or go out and come back in, I could select that template and eliminate all of those picks that I previously did. So with the template side, we have up to 20 templates that are available in project programming that I can save. So a, a quick time savings by creating these templates. Okay, so now that we're done with the template side, I'd like to go back through some more of the advanced side of it, uh, like on the edit technology side. So we're gonna start with that first. I'm gonna go a little deeper into the edit technology side. Uh, here in session two. So uh, rib is the first one. So with rib, the setup's a little bit different. Uh, the, with the rib length, uh, this is something that needs to be answered as far as the drop down boxes go. So a little different than what we did with uh, solid post machine or open side. So the rib length uh, uses a drop down menu. So uh, with that drop down menu, everything's in ranges. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that down. So you can see the first one, uh, 800 to two inch rib length. So that rib length is calculated 
uh, if we have multi ribs, like you can see in the photo, we're going to add all those together. So in this case, you can see the drop down anywhere from 40 thou to 200 thou, all the way up to eight inches of rib length. So once we select the one we want, then that sets our rib length. So we've set one from 800 to two inches. Uh, rib thickness, so rib thickness, again, is a drop down menu. Two. It's based off of the thickness at the tip of the rib. So basically where we enter the material, then again, ranges from anywhere from 20 thou all the way down to 120 thou. So we're gonna select the rib thickness at the tip. And then from there, a cavity depth. So just like we've done previously, how deep we're gonna burn or basically how much material depth we're gonna burn. Same thing in ranges. And then lastly, surface roughness. So with surface roughness, the same, and we're gonna pick the surface roughness or surface finish we wanna achieve with our final electrode. And then lastly, looking at the center, uh, we also have open-sided or pocket. Open-sided, basically the rib breaks out of the sidewall of the cavity or pocket, this is a captured rib that that's central to the pocket that we don't have the benefit of that open-sided. So we would select one of those two for rib. Uh, next one we're going to look at is gate. So gate, basically for plastic injection molding, gate is how the plastic gets in. So it doesn't matter how we burn the gate, uh, whether it be Z-axis or uh, vector burn. First thing we're going to do is pick the entrance diameter. So you can see there's ranges for the entrance diameter. Uh, cavity depth, similar to what we've done before, basically how much material that gate's going to burn out as far as distance, and then our surface finish or surface roughness. Uh, lastly, there's a checkbox there uh, that I just hovered over. So if the tip is less than 40 thou at the exit diameter, we're going to go ahead and check that box so the machine knows then that it's a very, very small gate at entrance and exit both. So, uh, Moving forward, we're going to look at complex grooves. So complex grooves uh, really developed for the die cast die side of it, either it be die cast or squeeze cast. So with these, they have a lot of surface area, a lot of undulation. Uh, if we were to stretch this out, there's a lot of surface area. So a little bit more difficult as far as burn goes. And these are generally large area burns. So we've created specific technology for this this technology called complex screws so spark area as we did before uh, drop downs for spark area drop down for cavity depth and then drop down for finish on the center again there's a little bit more uh, pre-machined so with a pre-machined cavity it's going to be milled sent out to heat treat and then comes back to, to pick out the area or finish that detail and then lastly, where we go from a solid block uh, with the, the electrode and then create that that complex screw. So uh, pretty straightforward, but in looking at the spark areas, uh, there's a, a lot of area there. So uh, anywhere from two to three inches is the first range all the way down to 12 inches or larger. So very large area. So again, you can see in the drop down uh, the different areas that are selectable as well. So again, cavity depth, roughness, the same as that we've done before. So next technology in the added technology side, undercut. So undercut, yeah, basically the, the key technology here is that we can orbit up and down to create uh, upper and lower surface finish and depth to an undercut and then also, we return to center when we jump. So that's one of the biggest features that we don't damage the electrode. So when we do this undercut, uh, you're actually under the sidewall. So we can't come out of the vector. We would damage that electrode. So with that, uh, we have four choices of how we're going to orbit out, out and then up and down as well. So side, uh, side basically is just an expanded side allowance it uses the reduction value to create that undercut value or diameter of a hole. Uh, upper and lower, so it orbits up and down equally. 
uh, upper basically orbits up, like it says, and then lower orbits in the down direction. So uh, as we change the dialog boxes, then that the allowance box are basically where that thing's going to orbit at, either that up, down, or upper, lower, independently, uh, will show up in that, that area. So electrode size, uh, based off of the, the, the diameter or size of the electrode, and then part height, again, is the, the amount of material we're taking out. And then lastly, roughness. Roughness is going to be then your final surface finish as well. So it's very, very similar to what we've done on the other technologies. Uh, then we move into tapping. So basically using an orbiting tap to do EDM tapping. Uh, difference here between undercut and tapping, uh, we do use the electrode size as the fastener size. So you can see different ranges of fasteners anywhere from half inch to seven eighths is the largest one, uh, small being number two to number 12. So uh, different uh, sizes of fasteners to create that thread with the orbiting tap. Uh, if you need a metric fastener, sure. so we do have metric fastener sizes in the uh, selection page to set up the, the project programming. Uh, we can set that to metric and then have metric sizes anywhere from M2 up to, I think, M16. So uh, similar with cavity depth and roughness. Next, we move on to helical. So helical gear machining. So this is your Z and C movement together, synchronized together. So how many rotations of C movement with X amount of Z movement to create that helical gear die. So pretty easy technology. Um, same as, as before, uh, pretty straightforward, similar to solid. We're going to uh, select spark area, cavity depth, basically how deep we're going to burn, and then that final surface finish as well. Uh, one of the keys with with the helical technology uh, is on the start and end process page. So guys that do helical gear machining on a daily basis understand the inputs needed to for start and end as far as the positioning, uh, whether it be lead entry or module entry. So on the positioning page, there's more, and it goes very in depth into the helical gear side that guys that do this every day will totally understand that. So again, in ranges for spark area, ranges for cavity depth, and then lastly, ranges for the roughness as well. So that's pretty much it on the edit technology side. So we went through most of the, the commonly used technology side. So uh, ne next thing I want to move into is on the orbit set top side or the orbit set icon. So I've selected that on the orbit set side. So we used just basic orbit patterns previously. We did uh, 2D round, 2D square, and spherical shape. Uh, so I want to move into now the 3D side so I can show you some of the more common uh, 3D patterns that are incorporated into the project programming. So uh, you can see the top row uh, all in the light blue color. So the light blue color represents uh, anything with a round top shape pattern. So with a 3D complex orbit, we need three pieces of information for the control so it can decide what it needs as far as the orbit pattern goes. Uh, we need the top shape, a bottom shape, and a corner angle. So those three pieces then will determine what type of, of orbit selection we need to pick from these 3D shapes, these pre-programmed shapes. So the first one we want to talk about is the drill shape. So drill shape, uh, without the drill shape icon, uh, we if we were to do this with just a, a spherical or a round orbit, uh, we would end up with a small flat equal to our reduction in the bottom of the cavity. So if we want that perfect point in the bottom, then we need some additional pieces of information in drill shape that will allow the, the machine to then know where that point needs to go. So if I go ahead and select the drill shape, it will then open up the corner angle item B, which you can see in the in the icon there. So when we select the corner angle B, 
it turns that box white so we can enter data in there. And that's going to be the side angle, basically, of that drill shape. So uh, in this case, let's say it's 30 degrees, I would enter 30 degrees. Then it knows, based off its Z depth, that the orbit shape on top needs to be round and where that point needs to end up at the bottom. Uh, moving on to sphere shape, so same sphere shape we've done in the past in the, the basic. Uh, next, bottom incline. Uh, bottom incline, so you can see both dialog boxes open up and turn white for data entry. Uh, rotation angle, we have that bottom incline angle that needs to be entered. And then also the, the corner angle, or basically the angle of the wall. Uh, we have servo axis finishing, half shape, and then 3D finish. Uh, a lot of guys confuse the 3D finish with sphere shape. 3D finish is a full, full 3D spherical roll. So it takes much longer to orbit because it has to orbit completely around that whole 3D. So it's it's much more involved to do this. So uh, the sphere shape only does that half, and that's more common. 3D finish then goes into it uh, much deeper as far as the segments, and that's full 3D roll. Uh, looking at the bottom section, so the light green colors, uh, we have wedge shape. So this has a square top shape pattern. Anything in green has the square top shape. So you can see that corner angle and rotation angle are also open here. So if we rotate the electrode, the physical rotation, we put in rotation angle. And then, of course, of course the corner angle of the, the wedge shape as well. Uh, bottom incline, same thing, so it opens up both, so the corner angle would be important there as well. And then lastly, the precision level. So we've talked about precision level before, but I want to just reiterate. So precision level is high, is based off of five tenths or better as far as the accuracy of the orbit, and then standard would be five tenths or higher. Mm -hmm. So these basically break that orbit up into segments. High has more segments than standard. So this is going to determine, based off of that, how many segments. Uh, high is going to take longer, obviously. So the balance between high and standard, what what you really need to get out of that that orbit for the the tolerance from the print itself. So user data follows our model plan programming strategy. So these are the the more advanced programming system inside of the machine. But we can use these same techniques with project programming that we do with model data. So in the user side or user data, all of the model data, our start and end processes, our orbit patterns, uh, our cycle jumps, cleaning jump, any of the settings inside the control are all changeable during uh, this project programming. So I'm gonna use the reference to user button to take them from the reference side to the user side and then I can make any adjustments. So let's say I want to change the start position. I'm gonna go ahead and go from a six to a five, more aggressive on my start condition. And then when I select okay, it's gonna then take those user data changes into our project programming. That way I have more influence or control over that program. So if I need to go back and make any changes in the edit technology side, again, the left side is the reference side, right side is the user side. So any changes I want to make that get put into that project programming are done through this user side. So third technique I want to talk about today is in the electrode side. So when I create my electrodes, I'm going to give it the reduction, the automatic tool change number. But on the right hand side of the screen, there's many comp values that can be adjusted to change the program or, or adjust that. So let's say we, we made an electrode, it was milled. Uh, the guy that milled it missed the number. So instead of a 10 thou electrode, I have on my roughing side, I have a nine and a half thou electrode. So I wanna not change it here. I wanna go ahead and comp that reduction to, to make up for that error in the electro production. So I'm going to go into the compensation side for comp reduction, tell it that it's five tenths smaller than what it was. And then when I do that on that comp reduction box, it's going to then change that program. It's going to subtract five tenths from the 10 thou. And in my program, I'm going to have a nine and a half thou 
reduction on my electrode. So I don't have to do the math. I'm not gonna make mistakes by fat fingering it in. So it's gonna do all of these comps inside of the program automatically. Uh, some of the other features that are on the, the comps, uh, we also have comp position. So we can comp X, Y, or Z. We have orbit offset. So orbit offset is, is that expanded orbit where it, it will stretch an electrode in a single axis. So if I want to expand the X direction only in the X by two tenths a side, I can plug that number in, then that orbit will be two tenths more per side than what we put the reduction in. So in this case, a 10 thou reduction would get expanded to 10 thou and two tenths or two tenths per side, so 10 thou and four tenths total. Uh, the last one in here is comp depth. So let's say I know my electrode because of the wear is gonna come up a half a thou short. So I'm gonna go ahead and comp my depth by five tenths. So then it's gonna take my final Z position, move it down a half a thou and comp for that change. So these are some of the comps and the more advanced techniques in the project programming side. So again, just to go back over it, in the edit technology side, we have the user data side where we can make adjustments to the program. We have the template maintenance, so we can template any of those basic steps and create templates to speed up our process. And then lastly, in the electrode side, we can use any of those comps to adjust our program very simply. So that's the conclusion of our two-part series on project programming. So we, the first series, we went through some basic project programming techniques. Uh, second, we went through some of the more advanced techniques. So we're gonna go ahead and head back into the EC Center uh, where Brian Coward's waiting. Uh, if you have any questions, there's a chat function in the lower right-hand corner. Uh, Brian and myself will be available after the EC to answer any questions. And thank you for joining today. Thanks, Dave. Now Dave and I are available for any questions that you have concerning the presentation that we had here today over going over Sinker EDM programming. Okay. Um, thanks Dave for that presentation. Um, as Dave said, we're available for any questions that you might have. Uh, you've got uh, on the Right hand side there, there's a chat or a Q&A box. Either place, you could type in any questions that you would like to uh, have Dave or myself answer for you. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, please type them in the chat. So Dave, I got one question uh, asked me from a customer about the ribs. So the, your rib length, that you put in there is the rib length, <clears throat> um, it, like that picture has multiple ribs, right? So is the rib length the total of all, all those ribs or is it just the length of whatever one rib is? You're muted, Dave. Dave, you're muted. Uh, let's, there we go. Uh, let, so it's the total length of all the ribs, basically kind of put them end to end, I guess you'd say. So in this case, in the picture in the upper left-hand corner, uh, there's three ribs there. So if we if we took those and added them up, so let's say they're two inches long, and we stacked them end to end, so it'd be six inches. That's what you're going to put in the, the rib length box. So you basically take all the ribs, add them up end to end. Uh, once you get to eight inches, that's a maximum calculation that you need to put in. So we would stop at that point. Uh, the thickness, though, still is the same. So an average thickness. So if you have a couple different thickness ribs, you're going to need to average that out. And we still have a drop down box that's in ranges. So you're trying to fit those in, in that range. Okay. All right. And so I'm assuming that the, that length, when you give it that total length, that's that's calculating the surface area of the burn, right? Yeah, similar to like what it does for solid. You, generally with solid, you're doing length times width, so you're trying to get the area. This is just making it easier instead of calculating all of that area where the, the machine's going to do it for you based off of length of rib, 
and the width, basically the thickness at the tip. So it's doing that calculation for the surface area or what we call square area. Okay, very good. Uh, Aaron has a question here. Uh, why would you use the comp function instead of just adjusting your undersize on the electrode? Uh, so you you can do it either way. Uh, you, when To do one, not a big deal. When you start to do a bunch of them is where that really comes in handy. Uh, that way you're changing it and you're not doing the math inside the program. So let's say we had a five thou, we adjust it by a thou. So it's either going to be four or six, depending on if you're going up or down. So doing that, it's just adjusting the program. So the program still ends up the correct size. We're, we're just doing a comp using the, the comp system. So letting the machine do the math for you to, to eliminate some of the mistakes. Okay. All right. Uh, there's another question that just popped up. Uh, one of the other technologies that was there was punch machining or punch uh, that you didn't talk about. Uh, yeah, so I, I can give a little explanation about that. Punch machining is, is a little different technique for the sinker. So this is where we load a, a punch blank up in the, in the head generally. It becomes in the position in the head or in the spindle of the electrode. And then it has an electrode plate of some type with a machine shape, either wired or milled, doesn't matter. And, and we've taken basically pushed that punch shape through that that plate electrode to create a contour on the outside or a shape. So we reverse the polarity in punch machining. It automatically does that for you. And then it basically, we push that punch shape through and put that contoured shape on. And then it orbits on the way through. So it calculates its orbit, orbits through and does that for each process, just like it would in any, any uh, cavity detail. And then we can do it using flushing or suction or if there's a flush pot to do it that way as well, and it can jump as well. So uh, punch machining generally done more for uh, like your powdered metal techniques to build punches. So that's a pretty common technique for those guys to do that. Okay. Well, I don't see any more questions. Um, okay right now but if uh, anyone thinks of any questions in the future please contact me or dave and uh, we can answer any question that you might have concerning uh sinker edm programming or anything edm related uh, i want to thank everyone for taking some time to spend with us today and have a great day